Optimization solving, or linear programming as it's sometimes called, allows us to identify maximum or minimum values in a real world situation. And we do this using our knowledge of systems of inequalities along with Desmos. So let's jump right into an example. Carol has a website where she sells homemade shell earrings and necklaces. She can gather enough shells to make 15 total jewelry items per week. It takes 30 minutes to make a pair of earrings and one hour to make a necklace. She dedicates 10 hours a week to make this jewelry. Now Carol makes a profit of $15 on each pair of earrings and $20 on each necklace. So how many pair of earrings and necklaces should Carol make each week in order to maximize her profit, assuming she sells all her jewelry? Wow, that's a very wordy problem, right? So let's not get anxious about all those words. We'll just break it down into little parts, a system made up of little pieces. To start, let's try to determine what our main variables are going to be. In the end, we see that we're supposed to determine how many earrings and how many necklaces Carol should be making. And as we look through this question, everything is related to how many of each of these items are to be made. Thus, we'll take a moment to state, let x equal the number of earrings made, and y equals the number of necklaces made. Now, this might seem unnecessary to state these, but trust me, by the time you get to the end of one of these problems, you're going to want to be able to look back and be perfectly clear as to what's going on. So it is good to document this. And let's get started. Back to our question. We're told that she can gather enough shells to make 15 items per week. Thus, a nice simple inequality to represent that limitation would be x, the number of earrings, plus y the number of necklaces, adding those together for a total of, well, it has to be equal or less than 15. So there's our first inequality. And we refer back to our question. We're also told that it takes 30 minutes to make a pair of earrings and one hour to make a necklace. So the total time to make the earrings would be, well, 30 minutes, but we don't want minutes and hours mixed, so let's turn that into hours. 0.5 hours times the number of earrings made would give us the total amount of time to make the earrings. And in the same way, the time to make necklaces would be one hour per necklace times the number of necklaces made. Why? Our equation, 0.5x plus 1y, and what do we do with that? But we notice that in the next sentence, we're told that the total time per week she commits to this is 10 hours. So we know that her total time has to be equal or less than 10 hours. And there's our second inequality. So our last couple of inequalities are fairly obvious ones, perhaps. X, that is the number of earrings made, has to be equal or greater than zero. That is, she can make zero earrings if she wants, just focus on necklaces or whatever, but she can't make a negative number of earrings. That doesn't make sense. And in the same way, y, the number of necklaces built, has to be equal or greater than zero. Same idea. And that's our system of inequalities. The remaining information we find here describes Carol's resulting profits. And we see that she makes $15 per pair of earrings, and $20 per necklace. So her profit would be 15 times x, or the number of earring sets that she made, plus 20 times y, or the number of necklaces she made. Now we can't graph this equation onto our typical graph due to that extra variable p, so we'll just save this equation, not part of our system, but it will be useful to analyze our results later. We'll show you that when we get to it. So we're done what most people would consider the most difficult part of this problem. That is, picking apart all those words and making a nice system of inequalities. It's time to graph. So let's open up Desmos, and we'll take our system of inequalities and we'll enter each one individually into the boxes here, and then we'll take a look at our graph. 
And this here is our allowable region, where everything overlaps. It's time to label our vertices. Let's call them A, B, C, and D, just to keep track. And reading the locations for each of these points, we find that A is found at x is 0 and y is 0. So this is a situation where she doesn't make anything. She makes no earrings nor necklaces. Point B represents no earrings made and 10 necklaces. x equals 0 and y equals 10. Point C is where she makes a mix of them. She makes 10 sets of earrings and 5 necklaces. And finally, point D is where she makes 15 sets of earrings and no necklaces. Recall that our four points here will represent Carol's maximum and minimum profits. We just have to determine which is which. Taking our vertices and then using our profit equation that we built before, let's put them together and determine the profit that Carol would make at each one of these situations. Plugging in the numbers for point A, we get a profit of, well, 0 plus 0 is 0. And that makes sense. If she doesn't make any jewelry, well, there's no profit. The profit at point B, that is all necklaces, well, plugging in those numbers and we get $200. The profit for point C, well, 10 sets of earrings and 5 necklaces, well, we plug those numbers in and we have $250. Well, that's better. And finally, the profit for point, that is all earrings, well, 15 and 0, we come up with $225. Not quite as good. Recognizing our minimum profit, well, that's easy. $0 if Carol does no building. And our maximum profit, well, that's more interesting, $250. And that's accomplished by building exactly 10 sets of earrings and 5 necklaces. And this might be a good thing for Carol to know when she plans out her week. So we have solved our problem. But let's return to our graph, and this time we'll plot our calculated profits on each of the vertices. And that will allow us to reflect on some extra information. Note that whatever Carol decides to do in a given week, it falls somewhere in this allowable region. For example, it could be any one of these points. They all fall within our constraints. Also, we note that the profits will always be between zero and $250 for that week, always between our minimum and our maximum, with every point here falling somewhere in between there. Also, if she decided to just focus on one type of jewelry for a given week, well, we can look at these two points and we can see that it would be more profitable to focus on earrings strictly rather than on necklaces. More profit. Given that, the combination of earrings and necklaces could be even more profitable, as we see here. Things to consider.